I really credit a lot of my progress to being a part of our community. And I do believe that you make stronger, more personable friendships on a blog. Welcome to the Creative Type Podcast. This is our second episode. I'm Lori Rivera, one of your hosts. And hi, I'm Jamie Haney. I'm your other host. And we are going to talk today about ways to cultivate community. And if you don't have an artist community to be a part of, whether that's online or in person, we're going to give you some ideas on how to widen your circle of artist friends. So first on our list is Facebook. So who do you know that's not on Facebook? Probably not many people, yeah. right? Everybody's on Facebook. Yeah, they don't want to admit much. it. They're on. <laughs> <laughs> right, exactly. <laughs> so I thought I'd talk a little bit about how our group came about. Um, we have a group that started off about four people. Well, it started off with four people. Now we're down to mostly three. I think, Jamie, you mentioned Sandy in our last episode. Yeah. And uh, she's had some different things in her life. She's had to, you know, uh, pull back a little bit. So Vicki, Jamie, and, she's and I. She's a traveler. Yeah. Yes, she travels everywhere. Yes. Uh, and they are converting their bus, remember? Yeah. Yeah, the, yeah. School, the schoolie is what the she The schoolie, yeah. yeah. So yeah. they're going to be traveling in their bus that they're converting. So that's fun. Uh, but anyway, so our group kind of evolved from Facebook, even though we knew each other in person before we kind of formed our group. Really, it seems like we just all started talking on Facebook and we created a, a group in Messenger and we just got on there almost every day and talked to each other. Is that how you remember it too, Jamie? Oh, yeah, for sure. That is how it kind of budded into. And then we discovered Marco Polo. And once oh, yeah. we discovered that, it was like, oh, it was on all the time. But yeah, that is yeah. how we, we started it. I, yeah, I, I had forgotten about that. I'm yeah. Glad you, you brought that up. Yeah. And Marco Polo. Yeah. We were on there almost every day. Yep. But uh, anyway, finding a uh, group of people, even if it's just one other person in the beginning, I think if you get too many, it's almost overwhelming. I think a good number is like maybe three to four people. If you can uh, bounce ideas off of them and uh, your inspirations, your struggles, your right. victories, just a group that you can share with. Yes. And it's kind of like it's they become your friends. I mean, these girls have become like sisters to me. I tell them things that I wouldn't tell other people. And so it just becomes like your little close knit group friend group. And and it may not. It may just remain business like. And that's OK, mm -hmm. too. I think a, a good place to start is, Laura, you mentioned the contacts. For Facebook right. Contacts that'd be just like your friends. Right. And that what you mean? Yeah, friends. friends. Yeah. yeah. And if you're an artist, which you probably are since you're listening to this podcast, but I'm sure that you have other artist friends uh, in your contacts. And if you don't, once you go to art openings or lunch and learns or getting out in, into the art community, you'll eventually have those contacts on Facebook and you'll get to know people. Right, right. And then you'll see who you click with and some you don't. And it's the same for us. And we all just happen right. to click. Um, I'm into the Zodiac and we are all uh, very compatible signs. Let's see, Lori, yeah. you're a Capricorn <laughs> and uh, Vicky's a Cancer and I'm a Taurus. So uh, you and I are Earth signs and uh, Vicky's the water sign. So, But we all are very compatible. Yeah. Y'all are probably thinking I'm a freak, but it's okay. <laughs> Jamie then, always enlightens us. Oh yeah, I'm, I'm always. I'm out gonna there. look up. I'm gonna look up your birthday and see yeah. what your uh, strengths and weaknesses are. <laughs> That's something I always ask people, and I try to do it covertly, you know, because you don't want to go out and say, "Oh, what's your sign?" You know. <laughs> yeah. So I'll say, "Oh yeah, when's your birthday?" And then, and then it gets a little deeper because that's so generalized the day. So I'll right. kind of go down and like, "Oh, do you know what time of day you were born?" Like, what, can you give me the <laughs> yeah. precise time zone? <laughs> right, right. But anyway, that's uh, that's we kind of got off on a tangent there. Sorry about that. But yeah, the some people we just naturally click with don't we and uh, yeah I think that's just amazing that we all we were fast friends right away oh yeah we were 
And if you're, like I said earlier, if you're looking for a group to be a part of, or, you know, just kind of reach out to your friends on Facebook, get to know them. Uh, That's that's a great start. Yeah. That's really uh, what we did. Yeah, it is. And then I would say the next thing that you could do is join some groups. Just do a search in Facebook and type in art groups. And once you find one, Facebook is notorious for showing you all these others, right? And just Mm -hmm. go in and join. Most of them are, I wouldn't say, well, I shouldn't say most. A lot of them are private, but go ahead and join. Sometimes you can, I suggest you read the about the group. And, you know, if you're a beginner, You might not go into a seasoned group that, you know, has people that's been in the business for 20 or 30 years or, you know, unless they're an active mentor, you know, offering mentorships, but that's not very common, I don't believe. Uh, But you could go in and find something that sounds like you want to be a part of. And nothing Mm -hmm. says that you got to stay in that group. If you don't like what's being said in the group, and a lot of times they're just not active, and sometimes they're overly active, or you just don't have the time or to commit to participating in the group. You know, a lot of us just kind of, you know, stalk around in a group (laughs) and that's okay too, you know, until you get your, (laughs) your footing in there. Yeah. uh, You can leave the group if it's not the right fit for you and go find another one because there are a ton. Oh yeah. And oh, one thing I was going to add to the Facebook groups is here in Evansville, there's one called, I think it's called Evansville Artists Community. And that's right. I don't both a part of that. Yeah. It it has like 700 people in it, I think, or something like that. I know it's a lot. Yeah. And so you might want to even see if there's one in your city, in your town, uh, you know, just a general overall artist group and you can meet people that way too. That's a great, a great suggestion because not only are you joining a group, but if you join a local group, then you have a better chance of actually being able to go and meet that person. Exactly. And then, and then you can do like we did. We started getting together, not just on Facebook and messenger or texting or Marco Polo. We got together. Remember uh, oh, I yeah. have all these gardens at my house and I invite the girls over. We have a fantastic lunch that we all bring oh, yeah. you know, a little, like a potluck dinner, you know, lunch together. And, we would, and when it's pretty outside, we all uh, set up our paints and we'll paint together. And sometimes we just sit around and shoot the shit. Uh, yeah. <laughs> I guess we need to decide if we're going to have explicit words. <laughs> well, yeah. too late. <laughs> too late. <laughs> but, that's you know, who we, we are, talk, right? <laughs> yeah, that's right. We talk business or we talk what's going on in our lives and we laugh together. We cry together. Um, it's, yeah. it's very nourishing to have friends, close friends like that, that are, that understand you because you guys, you get what I'm going through and I get what you guys are going through, especially with not only being female, but just being in the art business and, you know, it can be ruthless. Oh yeah. It really can. It's brutal sometimes. Yeah. Yeah. Lots of rejection and, and just, yeah. Yes. And yeah. yeah. And self-criticism. Oh yeah. And oh my gosh, we've got so much stuff to talk about in the future for future blog or podcast about that but yeah and then so I guess we can move on to the the next one Lori yeah the next one we had was gallery lunch and learn so it wouldn't have to be a gallery lunch and learn it could be any type of art lunch and learn um what was the one we went to that Dawn did what was that what was was, the title of it do you remember I don't know what did that That was the museum oh I can't remember but anyway uh it was a great one But I can't remember the title, what the title was, but it was a good one. And uh, it was offered by a local gallery here in town. They were doing some lunch and learns. And that's a great place. Are you talking about Ted's Gallery? Right. Yes, yes. Oh, yeah. Yeah. That was so fun. Unfortunately, they're not around anymore. Yeah, it's sad because they did such a great job at connecting the community. So uh, so I guess that could be in there, too, with uh, the lunch and learns. Just if you have a gallery in your town that really tries to create a community you can join up with that and uh but any lunch and learns and all that kind of stuff yeah. is and just if great you, and if you are friends with the gallery owner or you know even just halfway you know 
can speak with them and they don't offer any lunch and learns, maybe you su- suggest that to them. Oh, yeah. Say, hey, let's get the artist community together. And uh, they hosted it when it's pretty. It was outside. And it's not like it was anything fancy. There was no refreshments or anything like that. Right. Sometimes there was the lunch and learn, but sometimes we just had get togethers. Yeah. And, uh, you know, it could be very casual. And a lot of times in the evening, it was just for fun. I never made any of those because I had to be home for the family. But yeah, uh, I wanted to go and they would play music. And because, you know, they were uh, some of them were very. Oh, what is it? I'm trying to say um, varied in their artistic skills, you know, like playing oh, yeah. guitar or in one. And Ted did chainsaw sculptures oh yeah and, those were oh, cool gosh it was just what a fun time that was good old that COVID. was I think COVID is what closed them down and they never opened back up isn't that yeah what, what happened? I think I think maybe yeah yeah but but yeah it was a good time and it was fun while it lasted but yeah if you don't have any going on talk to a local gallery or or even it doesn't have to be an actual quote gallery anyone it can be that, yeah, yeah that, that, anything that sells art or even maybe framers, you know, if they have a gallery wall, right. they sell on commission, then or, maybe they would be willing to, to get to host something or you just never know. It doesn't hurt to ask, right? right. All they can or, say is no. or an arts organization like Henderson, the oh. city next to us, they have the, uh, I think it's called the Henderson Society of Art. So, you know, it's just a oh, group yeah. of artists yeah. who Kentucky. Yeah. share resources and information with each other about exhibits and different things. And yeah, and uh, there are all kinds of options. Yep. And if you don't have anything, then try to set one up yourself. Yeah. Yeah. Then you'll never miss a thing, will you? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. All right. Are we ready to move on to the next one? I think so. Okay. Well, mine is, and this is kind of old school, but this is how I started out a long time ago is blogs. And I think blogs are trying to make a resurgence. Have you noticed that? Have you noticed some people starting them? Because to me, especially artists. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I started out in the blog realm and I started out with blogger and it was 2009 when I started my blog. And so that's awesome. Yeah. It's about 13 and a half years ago it was like july and i think the first i do remember the first uh blog post that i put it was about my cat <laughs> oh. and i think i titled it like dang cat because <laughs> oh and she was so beautiful but anyway i i regress there um the i had a huge community in in blogger and it seems like they're a totally different type of group. You're yeah. very invested in these people. You know, today with Facebook and Instagram and any of the others that you might get on, it's also, I kind of feel like it's surface. You know, you, right. you you can hit the like button and go on, right? It's just so easy and you're on it for three seconds. And, and that's a long time, three seconds. But when you go to a mm-hmm. blog, you know, that's several minutes to read. And then you go through and you read the comments and you start, if you start going, you develop your favorite ones and you go there back and back again and comment and you just form friendships and you start to see how the other commenters, uh, and most likely they have a blog too. So then that leads off. It's like a big tree with all these branches. And at the end of each branch is another blog post or another blogger. Oh yeah. That's, I mean, it's unreal. They, I, mean, I still am in contact and Facebook friends and Instagram friends now with people that I started in the beginning blogging with. That's and, awesome. Yeah. Yeah. You have awesome. a lot of contacts. Yes. And I, am, I was telling Lori earlier that I am coming up on my 900th blog post. I think <laughs> I'm at 883 right now. So I've got a few. That, and I neglected to, to blog this week, but it's on my list. Of that is amazing. Days. Yes. And you, yeah. you are so good at blogging. I mean, oh, you do you. it faithfully almost every week, don't you? I try to. Yeah. Sometimes yeah. for a while there, I went where it was twice a month and I thought I need to, I miss this. I want to keep it up and yeah. keep, keep up my, cause you know, if you're out of sight, out of mind, and that is a true statement. Oh yes, and, it is. Yeah. Yeah. And then right. I switched my blog over from blogger to WordPress because I wanted to have more of a, 
um, a presence with my artwork and the ability to sell it. And, you know, Blogger wasn't very professional. So when I switched over to that, and that's been several years now, I did lose a lot of contacts that way because they were all on blogger and that made it you know when you're on one system it makes it mm -hmm. so much easier to go in and find the people that you're following there's a feed in there that would tell you you know show you the latest blog from whoever it was and give you a snippet of it right whereas um if they added my wordpress blog they would have to have a different feed burner i believe is what that's called i'm not sure on that uh -huh. but it wouldn't necessarily pop up on their their blog feed. So mm -hmm. I lost a lot of, um, you know, what I noticed more than anything is I lost comments. People weren't commenting as much. Oh yeah. I had more people reading because WordPress has its own set of bloggers and community. And it right. took me a while to build that up, but it, it did, you know, you, it's the same deal. You start looking at blogs that resonate with you, you comment, you become friends, you comment on other commenters and you become friends with them and you go follow their blog and find out what's going on in their life. And that's just how you build a community. And just yeah. like what we're talking about today. Yeah. I think in some ways it's easier to feel connected to people through blogs rather than Facebook. Yeah. And I think oh, I you agree. kind of touched on that earlier a little bit. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, because you go so in depth in a, right. in a blog and I think you talk more intimately because even though it is public, it's still your little tiny corner of the world and that's yeah. your space. Facebook can't take that away from you. They can't change the algorithm where no exactly. one can find you, you know, you own that. And I do believe that you make stronger, more personable friendships on a blog. And I'd like mm -hmm. to see more people do blogs. Now, Lori, Me too. You've, had, you've had several blogs. You'll start a blog and then you <laughs> kind of let it wane and then you'll get yeah. back on the wagon. I'm and where really, are you at now? With I'm inconsistent with my blogging and you really inspire me to try to be more consistent with it. Oh, I'm so, good. I'm glad. I'm glad. Yeah. I started out on blogger as well. Oh, yeah, I you? think it was Blogspot and Blogger were the same yeah, thing, I think, right. right? Yeah, yeah, that's right. Yeah, yeah, and my blog, my old one, when I first started painting over 10 years ago, it's still up. It's now, up. Yeah, mine I is up too. Yeah, I didn't do a whole lot with that blog except post images. I didn't yeah. really do a lot of writing on there. It was more of like a, just a record of my paintings, you oh, know? Oh, well, that's cool too. Yeah, and then I started another one uh, on Blogger as well. After I got married. Oh, you're going to have to give some links for these. Oh, I want to yeah. see, see some of these beginning paintings. <laughs> uh, when my name changed, I decided to start a new blog because I was, I decided to go with my married name, yeah. you know, for my paintings. I hadn't painted it in a while, yeah. but I picked it up again after Autumn, which is my daughter, our daughter. Um, when she was about, oh, I'd say four or five, I picked up painting again. And, yeah. uh, and then, but now I have my blog on my Faso site. That's what I use for my web host. And I am determined. <laughs> I'm really determined to try and blog more this year. So well, I'm I hoping I, I probably won't be as prolific as you are with my blog, but maybe if I can do one like every other week, I'd be happy with myself. I think that's a good goal. Set that. And you know, I have, um, have a thing on my phone, write a blog post today. So just put it on your calendar. Yeah. And, and, you know, it doesn't have to be, it can just be outline form. It could just be jotting your thoughts down. It's, it's a journal. I really do treat it like a journal yeah. and it's like being able to take a peek into someone's journal is a lot of it. And, and sometimes I talk about, you know, off the wall stuff. It's not all art related. It's about my gardens, right. it's about my, my pets and my family, my vacations, you know, it's my thing. I can do what I want to. And I kind of feel like a blog is more casual you can yeah it doesn't have to be everything art related um, it's just a another peek into your world right and I think collectors and art buyers they like to get a little piece of that they do the I artist. think it's yeah I think it's important that you mention that because I don't think it should all be art related because how do right. we connect with other people it's more than just our art I they yes, connect I with you so. because you have a family and they have a family or you like to vacation in Florida every year in the summer. Oh, we do that too. You know, uh, whatever right. they have in common with you, that, that is how they're going to connect with you. That's right. I agree. And I think that is the main reason that I enjoy blogs is because it's like finding another friend. I live way out in the country. You know this, Lori. Oh, I mean, yeah. I'm <laughs> I still get minutes. lost going to your yeah. house. <laughs> <laughs> so it's not like I can walk out and chat with a neighbor. Yeah. So 
blogging to me brought the world, especially when my son was little and he was a handful and I had blogging to complain about being a mom and, you know, and there was others join right in, you know, it's like, oh, this will pass. And, you know, it's just such a great community. I just can't stress enough how much a blog is good for your soul. You know, it just, yeah. it's good to get that out. And, you know, I'm more of a, I wear my heart on my sleeve and I talk a whole lot. And so I blog a whole lot. <laughs> I talk, my blogs are kind of long. You've said that before. Oh my God, it's so long. <laughs> I love you know, reading them, but, but it's yeah. just the way it is. Yeah. And I just, you know, I get on there and just type away. <laughs> <laughs> well, let's, I think we've covered blogs pretty good. Uh, do I you want to so. talk about the next one? What do we have left? Art festivals? I think yeah, that's the only one we have one left. One and one more after that, the openings. Oh, yes, yes, that one too. Um, oh, our meeting will end in 10 minutes. Oh, wow, we've so, talked a while. Okay, well, let's Yeah, we have. Quick. Yeah, well, how uh, so, about, well, what if we switch this around? I know you were going to do art festivals, and I was going to do art openings, but I think you have more experience in openings than I do, and I have more experience in festivals than you do. Okay. Yes. I think so. I think so, you're right. Yeah. I'll yeah. just touch, touch on this real quick. Art festivals, you know, the art shows that you see outside that the artists have the white tents or not, maybe not white, but that's typically what you see. And we have a little 10 by 10 booth. And that's how I started selling my artwork. I got started mm -hmm. in that. And that is a great way to build community because, and it might not even be another artist. It could be a buyer or a collector that you have a community with and that is this kind of seg is a segue into future po uh, podcast episodes but if you start going to an art festival or you have a booth there I can't stress enough have an email list these people want to hear from you and even if you don't have anything to say yet collect their name anyway and their name and their address and if you if they'll let you I like to get a physical address because I send snail mm -hmm. mail to my yeah email, me too my people so I think it's important for that um most of the other artists that are in an art festival it's a it's a community and then when you're putting your booth together everyone it's a rush and then there's ups and downs through the festival time. It's never like 100% go time. It seems like everyone will help each other setting up. And so that is a time to really notice who you're hitting it off with. Like your booth, the person next to you more than likely, because you just aren't going to have time. People are busy. I know that it takes me a long time to set up my booth. And that if someone comes and talks to me while I'm doing that, I lose my focus on what I'm doing and it slows me down. So mm -hmm. uh, if someone is working on a booth, I would suggest do not try to start your community right then. Wait till they have all their stuff up and then go in and exchange business cards or phone numbers or emails and then try to build a community from that. And as you... Uh, talk with that person during the day, then you'll know if you guys are clicking or not. And and that is a perfect way to not only find out other art festivals that you can go to, right. but you build a rapport with this person and they, who knows, they may become part of your art community. And I have met some people like that, um, like at Funk in the City a lot. That's an right. uh, Evansville show that, that is still going on that we don't really do much anymore. It's kind of changed, but, um, I yeah, and New Harmony of, has a lot of shows too yeah, where you are. Of, yes, I did a lot of New Harmony shows. But I met Glenn and Vincent and uh, mm -hmm. and uh, Daniel that way. And I'd say they're all part of our community in a maybe a more distant way. They're not as close as what you and I and Vicky are. But, mm -hmm. um, you know, they're still there. And I think it's good to have right. different because you always need to have uh, everyone needs friends, right? We all need to have someone that can maybe. Uh, give us a hand with something. I mean, and all those people that I mentioned has given us um, opportunities like with oh, yeah. uh, Daniel and the pizza place. The pizza factory. Yeah, yeah that's right. And um, just, it seems like most artists are, we're all pretty much a good group of people and we want to help other people out, other artists out for sure. So yeah. I think art festivals are a really good way to build community. And I then, think so, so too. Yeah. Why don't you close with the, uh, the last one there? Yeah. Art openings. So, uh, galleries, this would mainly be galleries, I guess. Um, and I know it can be a little intimidating at first if you're a new artist and you haven't 
gone to many galleries, it can be intimidating at first, but I would recommend just give it a try. Go to art openings. It's a great way to, and when I say art openings, I'm talking about receptions Mm -hmm. for exhibits. Yeah. Yeah, For the exhibits. Uh, We have the Hoosier Salon Gallery in New Harmony. We have the Arts Council. We have Oval in Henderson, Kentucky, which is right south of Evansville where I'm at. Uh, But the art openings, the receptions are just a great way to network, get to know other artists, get to know the gallery owners. Um, Yeah, because more than likely it's a group show. So you got a group of artists that are uh, asked to be there for the artist opening and you're there for like, I don't know, one or two hours, right? Yeah. uh, And that's how a good way to meet. And again, you just see who you click with. Yeah. And you don't have to be there for the whole hour or two hours. Right. You know, if you don't, especially if you don't have anything in that particular show, just pop in, pop in for 10 minutes and just walk around, look at the art and, you know, you don't even have to. Right. And if you're uncomfortable talking to people, because I know a lot of artists are more, well, not a lot, but some of them are more introverted. Just go and worry about talking to people at the next one, you know, just kind of feel it out and get comfortable with it. Yeah. And your face will become, uh, people will get used to seeing you. And so that, that the next time you show up, they'll be like, Oh, I saw you at the last one. And that's a great conversation starter. Oh yeah. Especially if you're a little more on the shy side. And also I wanted to say real quick about the gallery, you know, it doesn't have to be some big fancy gallery pick, pick us a, yeah, maybe even a co-op or just Mm -hmm. a small gallery. Start, start that way. If you're intimidated by the gallery scene, I know I was, I thought they were a little too hoity toity for me, you know, (laughs) once you meet the gallery owner or the uh, curator, then, you know, it's, they're just people. They're usually way more down to earth than we envision them to oh, be. Oh man, that you know? is the truth. Yes, that is, and <laughs> yeah. that's been that's been the case for pretty much every gallery that I've been in so far. Right. Yeah. yeah same here. Yeah. Well, this has been a good show. Yeah. Yeah. So this has been gonna, fun. Yeah, it's been. I think we talked a lot. Let's see. We talked about the Facebook contacts and let's see Facebook groups. groups. Yep. Yeah, the lunch and learns. Art festivals, blogs, yeah, blogs, and the art openings. So I think yeah. we've uh, given a, some a lot of things to think about as an artist, wanting community. And uh, I guess until next time, we can sign off. Yeah, and if you have any ideas, we're end. and if you have any ideas on topics you'd like to see us talk about, just shoot us an email at creative type podcast at gmail dot com. That's right, and we'll have show notes in the description below. Uh, a link to that and uh, reach out to us anytime we'd love to hear from you yes all right right. thanks Thanks for for listening listening. bye-bye bye